Hello all, this is a quick little tutorial on just some basic setup and um, what we're going to be using is a generic model adaptive pipe. It's something that we'll kind of use throughout the semester for a lot of our modeling. Um, we're going to begin with just talking about the difference between projects and families. For those of you who have probably modeled a few things for studio, I'm guessing you jumped into what would be projects new, maybe architectural template. And what that's doing is this is where we're typically putting together a whole bunch of families things like windows, walls, doors, individual components, we're bringing them together in the project to then make the construction drawings. For this class, 90% of what we're doing is gonna be in these families. So we're gonna be opening, or we're sorry, gonna be having new families, new conceptual mass. And then when we're going to present these, when you're starting to work um, at the end of each one of these to kind of visualize them in it and get them into Adobe Illustrator, we'll then kind of put them together quickly in one of these. But most of our work will be done here. So what I'm going to get you in the habit of doing is making sure you go new. If you start with open, you won't find these. So if you just go new, it automatically opens up um, this dialog box. I just type in the letter G. It automatically goes to generic model adaptive and I hit enter that quick scroll I don't waste time um, you'll probably see that the layout will be something like this you'll have the properties box on the left and then the project browser over here I want you to change this um, unless you are incredibly fast and get paid lots of money to do Revit right now and you're used to what you're used to um, uh, I want you to change this. So I'm going to grab this project browser. I unlocked it over here. I'm bringing it to that right side so it's there. It does shrink the screen a little bit, but the nice thing is I can pull this over so I can just read those. I can actually push this over a little more too, usually with a little... I can get a little bit more out of this. Yeah, no, it's kind of being mad. Um, but the goal is... Um, granted, we used a little more of the screen. We end up scrolling to the bottom of this and the bottom of this a lot, and you waste a lot of time scrolling. So because there's so much information down here and down here throughout our work time, doing this little thing here saves a lot of time later. Um, so first thing I want you to do is, again, if you're not incredibly good at Revit, I want you to go into View. You see User Interface. In user interface, I want you to see keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts, you're going to import. There's going to be, um, I usually just drop it on the desktop. You don't have to save it anywhere. I sent you the Plodgy shortcuts. I'm going to say overwrite existing. And you're done. Okay. All right. What that did is if you um, at some point after this class, if you don't like some of the shortcuts, you can go change your own. It's very easy. You can reset it to the original. But while you're taking this class, if you want me to help you, you need to take the steps that help you, which are things like this. Um, all right. So. What we're going to do is look at some of kind of these basic elements that we're going to be building with. Um, Right now, when we enter in here, we see kind of these different work planes. Um, it instantly has a setup on this bottom work plane. So what I'm just going to do is drop a few points in. Um, most of the modeling that we do, we're setting up the logic that we want to control the form. We're not modeling the form to begin with. We're setting up the logic. So for those of you that play with Grasshopper, it is much more of that type of thinking. What are the points, lines? Um, that then create the planes and solids. So right now I'm just going to drop two points in here um, just to get used to it. This big square down here is almost like a large uh, project site. It's pretty big. So I'm just going to throw two dots down here. I keep my left hand with my pinky on the escape key because Revit wants to do a lot of things where um, to close out, I hit escape twice. So you get used to kind of that doing doing that quite a bit. So the first thing to do is I just zoomed in with my scroll um, is right now these are just points and they're um, in essence considered modeling points. I'm going to sweep and grab both and as soon as I grab them this option comes up for make adaptive. Okay, What we're doing is we're allowing these to be placement points so that when we bring this into another file these two points are going to control they're going to give us like two points to drop it in at, so um, control points. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
and do a model line. And you'll notice that when you first turn this in, when you first turn it on, you're going to see that if you do model line, the 3D snapping is off. Now, I want you, this is really dumb, but every time you turn on Revit, like if you close down Revit, you turn it back up, this automatically turns off. It's terrible. Um, so you have to remember, and you can spend a lot of time doing something because this looks like it snaps, right? You see that? It like, oh, snap to it, snap to it, right? Escape, escape. Now watch what happens. It didn't actually control, although it snapped to the location, it didn't host the line on that point. Okay, and that's a really important thing is we want these points to control the line. So now I'm going to do this again and say model line, but I'm going to make sure 3D snap is clicked. I hit there, and all of a sudden we see there's a little, you know, work plane that's rotating. It's it's being controlled by that. And I host there, escape, escape. And now all of a sudden we see that line moving. Now, it happens because um, we, we're going to be using this. We want to work and host more things onto this line. So I actually want that line. Uh, we can do it different ways. I can dissolve. and say I want a reference line. 3D snaps already done once. Reference line, I want you to see the difference. Reference line, escape, escape. All of a sudden when we touch this, it reference size has its own planes to work on. And that's really beneficial when we're trying to kind of build more complex forms or anything um, that works. So if you want to look rote orbit, this is probably one of the best orbits actually in any of the 3D modeling. You just hold shift down and right click and it spins around. So it's actually a really nice orbit compared to most of this stuff. Um, all right, so um, another way to just do that, I'm going to show you is that if you've done a model line, escape, escape. I made sure 3D snaps on, it moves, and you realize, oh, I want that to be a reference. If I select the line, I can look over here and we see is a reference. I can actually just make it a reference after the fact. So that's kind of a nice little moment there. All right. We're going to, I'm going to show you a couple things here. I'm going to do this a little more complex than it needs to be, but it's because there's a lot of things we want to do later. Um, so, uh, hosting this idea that this line is hosted on these two points right but now i'm going to take another point and i'm going to i want this point to be um on this line so see, watch what happens i select on there it's on there i i hit another one just let's say right i think i'm on there but i'm not right on there you can see really quickly the difference of the size of these two. So if you're trying, I, I wanted this point to be hosted on that. It actually makes the dot smaller than the one that's not hosted. Okay. We see this one it can move in any direction. This one actually just wants to slide on the line. Okay. So this gets really important when we're trying to, again, kind of lay out a logic for something. So when we hit this point, we can now see how are we controlling it. So over here on the left, it's driven by host. That's what it's saying there. We can say, is it a percentage normalized curve? We can say segment length, let's say. Right now, it is four feet. Let's make it one foot. There's one foot, but we can make it two feet off the end, okay? There's something there. So we're controlling its location on that line. We could actually say we want it to be, um, you know, specific length, uh, percentage, 50%. That's actually something that's interesting is, you just bring the point in here and I trace along, it will snap to the 50% midpoint. Okay, so that is kind of nice thing. You can just, a lot of times we just want the 50%. If I look at it in there, watch what happens when I touch it, it's at 0.5. You know, but let's say I want it different than this. See these two little arrows here? Right now it says from beginning. If I click this, it goes from end. And I'm going to go. Segment length again, like it went. Now it's saying 17 feet from that segment length. I'm going to put three feet. Okay, so now I'm three feet from this end, and I'm what was this one? 
So that's an, also a great way to just grab a certain object is the left to right sweep. So that I'm just grabbing this compared to if I grab right, I'm grabbing everything, right? So left to right quickly. Um, uh, so that was two feet, this one, three feet, okay. Now, I wanna show you how, um, that, well, this is what's nice. So those points, as we see, are moving on the line, right? So they're hosted on the line, the line's hosted on the points. Now, let's do um, a model, let's do a, a circle. And now this is important, right now, I want to draw it on that dot so that we're making a point. Um, SW is select work plane, or it was that button up there. I want you to get used to using key and so SW. Then it wants me to click with my left mouse button once to select the work plane. And now it's selected, and now I can click onto the there. And I'm not even gonna care, I'm just gonna draw a big one. I'm still having hit escape yet. SW again, grab it. Don't even care, just draw a big. Escape, escape. Okay, now I've got these two circles. This is what's nice, notice how they are always, they are hosted on the point, the point's hosted on the line, the line's there. So now we're starting to get this logic of elements, right? Um, if I grab onto it, I can just come in and change four feet, right? I can change these things really quickly. I can grab these two. I, okay, so what I'm grabbing two, I'm grabbing one, I'm holding control down, grabbing the second one, so now the two together, create four. Okay, this is interesting. These two things will, will honor this line, but you notice it's not the length. Notice it's not changing the length. It's not, it's not responding to that point anymore. And that point was staying three feet to the end of this. Now, so why isn't it changing, right? If I control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z. If I go back and grab both of these and say, make a reference line, now these are green, right? They're no longer model lines. Think of model lines being real, like it's a physical thing that can't change. And the reference line is allowing it to adapt. So if I grab these two now, make solid. Now all of a sudden, it's changing with it. Okay, so a lot of times where you're, you're saying, oh, my thing's not changing or anything, there's probably a model line in there that might have been um, not allowing itself to adjust. I'm going to control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z again, because we're going to do a couple more things here. We're going to actually deal with parameters. So the first thing we're going to do is play with the, with the um, controlling the diameter of these circles. So this is where it's a lot more energy to get stuff set up meaning a lot more time in the space of modeling. You're like, I can model this in five seconds in Rhino or SketchUp or whatever. But the idea is that you have the ability to adjust and make lots of variations later when you put the time in at the beginning. So there's more front end time, but you get a lot more out in later. So I'm looking at this. There's a dimension. You see the little dimension line here. If I click that, it makes the dimension real. See how like it doesn't exist right here, but then I touch it, I click that, it makes it real. So now this is interesting. Now, if I grab that dimension once it's real, we see this is what it's up here. There's a little box on the side there, create parameter. We want to create a parameter. Okay, we're going to name this parameter um, type diameter. Now, this is really important. Is it a type or instance? Right now, we're going to leave it as a type. Later, we'll talk about an instance parameter. So right now it's a type and it's a dimension, which means it's a physical size, okay? So we just say, okay, and right now that's what it is. Now this is interesting. You see that when we hit this, it was up there, right? That's how we got to that one. But now I already have that set as a parameter, right? So I can grab this one and say, I don't need to remake another one. I have it listed as, oh, now it changed it. Okay, so now I can control that by grabbing them. What's really nice is all the parameters that are in this file are going to be located right here, family types. Remember, this was a type parameter. So now I can look at this and just say, I want this to be two inches by tiny little pipe. I want this to be one foot diameter. Apply. They're changing, right? Okay. What's nice is this can also happen, control, control, 
create form. I can still go back into parameters and say three feet apply. Right? So it can work. It, because it's reference lines, it has a legacy and a history through that. Right? It's all being controlled. I'm going to say cancel. I'm going to control Z, control Z, and I'll have that form just so we can look at this. Now, if I sweep left, right, I'm grabbing all of this stuff, right? I actually just want to grab that initial point again. I can do this different ways. I can sweep left, right, and I just got that original point, right? This is the one that's three feet off the end, or the other one's two feet off the end. I can also just hover over here and tab through by hitting tab and just grab the point. Two different ways. I find left to right usually helps the most in most cases. So now that I have that point selected, I want you to see that in these things, every time there's this little box right here, see how like there's no box here, but there's a box here. There's no box here, but there's a box here. When there's a box here, it's exactly like that, that parameter button goes to the right of the dimension. It allows me to make this a parameter. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to say, no, I don't want to use the pipe distance. I want to use a new one. And I'm going to say, um, end offset. Again, I'm going to make it a type. OK. OK. So right now, if we look at what our things are, we have the pipe diameter, but we also have the end offset. If I make this. Uh, six inches apply that moves to six inches okay but now i want these to be the same so i'm going to sweep left i've got this one here and i can say well i want this to be driven by a parameter also i already have it made and offset okay so this is where i want you to get it. i'm going to grab the two green lines create form now we have this pipe okay it can move, it can change. We can also go in and change the pipe diameter three feet. We can change this two feet by, and we can make whatever shape we want. The nice thing is, is this is, I mean, is once you do this once and you save this component in a file structure where you're building most of your stuff, you can always pull this one in and use it. So you shouldn't have to do this more than once or twice as long as you save it in the right area. Um, all right, so I'm going to say file, save. Um, I would start a file for you want. I name all my stuff like a P, P made um, generic. So then this would be my generic pipe. Um, you might have a folder for just all of the components that you make for this class. And that way you can kind of move that around and save it where you want. Um, so that's where we're going to end today. Bye-bye.